Do Lord, please bless the uh, preaching of this word, do Lord. Uh, may this be well received by your children, dear Lord. We thank you for the word, and we thank you for all the meaning that it gives to us that informs our day-to-day -day lives. In Jesus' name we pray and ask all of these things. Amen. I'd like to thank um, Dr. Lee for reading the scripture for us today. I have two more scriptures I would like to read in addition to the other two that you have heard. First scripture is from Genesis 43 and verse 32. It says, they served him by himself and them by themselves and the Egyptians who ate with him by themselves because the Egyptians could not eat with the Hebrews for that is an abomination to the Egyptians. It's an abomination to the Egyptians to eat with the Hebrews. Gen uh, the next scripture for us is Genesis 46, 31 through 34, just three chapters over. Joseph said to his brothers and to his father's household, I will go up and tell Pharaoh and will say to him, my brothers and my father's household who were in the land of Canaan have come to me. The men are shepherds, for they have been keepers of livestock and they have been brought their flocks and their herds and all that they have. When Pharaoh calls you and says, what's your occupation? You shall say, your servants have been keepers of livestock from our youth until now, both we and our ancestors, in order that you may settle in the land of Goshen, because all shepherds are abhorrent to Egyptians. Genesis 46, 31 through 34. We know the story of Joseph. If you don't know it, I encourage you to read the story of Joseph tonight or this week. It's a very encouraging story. Today, I'm going to preach as if you know the basics of Joseph's story. You know that towards the end of, you know, Joseph's story, he, he becomes a real big shot. But he wasn't always one. He came from the bottom. He started from the bottom. To get to where he was going, he started from the bottom. But he was able to bring his whole family with him. However, his life was no crystal stair. He came from a group of people who were hated by what we could call the power class or the dominant class, the Egyptians. We see in these two texts that not only did Egyptians hate Hebrews, but Egyptians hated shepherds. Some scholars ask, why did they hate Hebrews? Why did they hate shepherds? And um, some scholars believe that they hated shepherds because the shepherds, the Hebrew shepherds, would sacrifice rams, and the and the Egyptians had a deity that was based on uh, a ram. Some scholars say that the Egyptians, being the high class people of the day, that they, they just looked down on people who lived in an undesirable place and herded sheep. The Bible doesn't make it clear exactly why the Egyptians despise shepherds and Hebrews, but many nonetheless, although the Bible doesn't make it crystal clear as to why, we nonetheless nonetheless know how this feels being despised for no reason just because of who you are does anyone hate you not because of what you do but because of who you are does anyone know how it feels to be looked down upon not because of some immoral thing that you do, but simply because of maybe where you're from. They don't like you because of the city you are from. 
or the neighborhood you are from. Anybody know how that feels? Maybe they dislike you because of your of your skin tone. Maybe it's because of your your gender. Was it because of your vote? They don't like your political voice. Was it because of your occupation? They look down on you maybe because your collar is blue instead of white. They look down on you maybe because of your tax bracket. You're not in a certain tax bracket. Maybe it's because you're not in a certain school zone. I don't know. Does anybody know what it feels like to be looked down upon? Not because of any immoral thing that you have done, but simply because of who you are. One thing I like about Joseph is that despite how people saw him, despite how people looked down upon him, it never held him back. Joseph own brothers. They saw him as a spoiled brat being favored by their father and receiving a, a fancy coat. They saw him as a snob when he received dreams that the family was going to one day bow down to him. They saw him as annoying when they decided to take him and sell him into slavery in Egypt. The Egyptians just saw him as a slave. His, his slave master's wife saw him as a sex object. And once he rejected her, she saw him with scorn and saw him as disposable. And she, she accused him, falsely accused him of attacking her. And then once that happened, the slave master Potiphar then saw him as a thug, as a criminal, and threw him into prison. His prison guards, his prison mates just saw him as a criminal. And the cupbearer with him in prison saw him as one to be exploited because when Joseph helped him by interpreting Pharaoh's dreams, he used interpretation to help himself, but not help Pharaoh get out of jail. Interesting thing about Joseph is that through all that adversity, he didn't take his heart off of God. Because although his brothers sold him into slavery. God didn't allow him to stay a slave. Although Potiphar's wife tried to lie about him, God protected him from getting killed. Although he was thrown into prison because of his lies, God didn't keep him there. Joseph was given opportunities to successfully interpret Pharaoh's dreams, and Pharaoh then promoted him as second in command over all Egypt. And despite all of these people, despite how all of them saw Joseph, he didn't let it destroy him. He remembered how God saw him, which means he had faith. Even at the end of his life, Joseph trusted God. Hebrews 7.22 says, by faith, Joseph, when his end was near, spoke about the exodus of the Israelites from Egypt and gave instructions concerning the burial of his bones. So my question is, how does God see you despite how others see you? Because sometimes we get we get so wrapped up into into how others see us that we allow it to put us in a prison much similar to how Joseph was in prison. Uh, sometimes we get so caught up into other, to how others uh, see us uh, that we allow for the carrot on the stick which is this person's perception to control us and to move us and to take away our own agency because we are trying to get them to see us in a certain light. But what does it matter when God sees you? God took Joseph on an extended tour of Egypt before elevating him to a high position. And there is no opinion like God's opinion. People, people throw opinions around. They think you're a thug, they think you're a criminal. They, they, they think you're this, they think you're that. They, they, they think you're common, they think you're this. What matters 
It's not their opinion of you. But God's vision for you. How does God see you? And what does God have in store for you? So I believe that for far too long, we have allowed ourselves to be enslaved by how others see us. And it's time for us to become free from their perceptions and focused on how does God see me? Time and time again, those who looked at Joseph, they looked down on Joseph and they failed to see what God saw. His brother saw in him a useless dreamer. The Midianite trader saw him as a source of profit. Potiphar saw him as a gifted slave. Potiphar's wife saw him as a potential lover. The prison warden saw him as a hopeless case, but all of them were wrong because God saw Joseph as the future prime minister. God saw Joseph as a one who was spiritually mature. God saw Joseph as one who had organizational skill. God saw Joseph as one that could bless the Hebrew people if he elevated them. God knew that, you know, sometimes, 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 sometimes when uh, when people when people who are of 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 of, of uh, come from marginalized communities, uh, when they get positions like this, uh, when they get put in these high positions like Joseph got put into, uh, they get those positions and they say uh, uh, where I come from again. <laughs> who 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 are y'all people again? <laughs> y'all y'all could do much better if you just if you just pulled your pants up. Okay, all right. Y'all y'all could do you know <laughs> y'all y'all could do much better if you were like me and did the right steps that I did. But see, but see, Joseph Joseph knew better. He knew that it was only by the grace of God that he went forth. Joseph knew better. And humility is what allowed God to exalt him because God knew that once he exalted Joseph, that Joseph would be a blessing to his people. God saw Joseph as the, as the future prime minister, spiritually mature with who had organizational skills, who could save two nations, the Egyptians and his family. His family, which will one day become the family of Israel. And, and what I wanted to tell you today is that God's perspective of Joseph was far more accurate and far more important than the view of any person. God often sees things that we don't see. God often sees things and, and we don't see that we don't see. God sees things in us that we don't see. God sees your gifts that you don't see. And sometimes God is trying to push us and we're pushing back against God. But we, we got to be careful because not only does God see things in us that we don't see, but God sees things in the people that you don't like that you don't see either. That's why we got to be so careful about trying to throw folks away. Joseph brothers tried to throw them away. They tried to throw them into slavery. But little did they know that one day that same brother they threw into slavery was going to save them from famine. We got to be careful who we try to throw in a hole we got to be careful. So we got to be careful because God sees us in a certain way, but God sees those who we don't like and knows their gifts. Well, that old good for nothing. But he was good enough for Christ to die for on the cross. She was good enough for Christ to die for on the cross. God sees something in them. I want you to know, dear family, because I, I can't, I, I can't go through the room and 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 figure out how how each person has been affected by 
by negative talk throughout your life, how how people have tried to clip your wings and have tried to discourage you and have tried to make you look in the mirror and see something that you don't like. But I want you to know that all those things that people have tried to lay on you is nothing. Because what matters is not how they saw you, but what matters is how God sees you. What matters is how God sees you. This text here today is such a moving text. Genesis 45, starting at verse 9. The text says that, hurry and go up to my father and say, thus says your son Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me and do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen and you shall be near me. You and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks and your herds and all that you have. And I'll provide for you there since there are five more years of famine to come so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty and and now your eyes and the eyes of my brother Benjamin see that it is that it is not my own mouth that speaks to you. You must tell your father how greatly I am honored in Egypt and and that 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 you and that all that you have seen hurry and bring my father down here. Then he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and he wept. Benjamin wept upon his neck and he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them after this. His brothers talked with him, the same brothers that threw him in a hole, the same brothers that sold him into captivity, the same brothers that despised him, the same brothers that hated him to sell him into slavery. And he, he hadn't seen them for years. They sold him as a boy and now he's a grown man. The same brothers, he embraces them and he weeps. I, I, I just don't believe that Joseph would have been so blessed by God if he had vengeance in his heart. Here comes these brothers. Look at them now. <laughs> they starve. Well, look at me. I'm a big shot. Look at my fancy watch. Look at my fancy clothes. Look at y'all looking like bums. Look at me. I'm rich. Take them and throw them into slavery like they threw me into slavery. I don't think that God would have blessed Joseph so much if that was his heart. Just like God sees the good in us, God also knows the worst of us. If we have that kind of heart, where we want and look at our brothers now who are repentant, our brothers now who are in a humble state, our brothers now who are in the best position to learn the lesson and say, ah, <laughs> I'm going to do to you what you did to me. If you have that kind of heart, then don't, then don't wait on being elevated like Joseph was. Why y'all get so quiet? Joseph was elevated because of the humility of his heart. That despite all, those, all of what those brothers did to him, he still said, I'm going to give you some land and I'm going to take care of you through this famine. Another thing about this text I want you to see. And I don't want you to feel like that Joseph was some some superhuman that didn't feel pain. As you read this text, do you notice who Joseph asked for over and over and over and over and over again? He asked for his father. He was desperate to see his father again because he know he knew that his father loved him. He knew that his father was missing him. 
and the people who kept him away from his father were standing there right in front of him in need. So Joseph could have been vengeful. You kept me away from my father. I miss my childhood. I miss my boyhood with my father. I had to be a, 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 a teenager in, in prison. I, I had to be a, a, young, a young man having to be falsely accused. I, I didn't have my father to lean on and, and ask my father for help because of you. He could have been vengeful, but he decided to be merciful. And when I read the story, I tell you, it just it just reminds me so much of the mercy of God. You know, sometimes when I when I watch the news, I hope you all don't judge me for this. Sometimes when I watch the news, when I read news stories. I see these horrible stories. I know we see these terrible stories. We all see them. And I, I watch them and I, I ask myself sometimes, I say. I say mercy. Jesus came and died for humanity. Humans are a hot mess. Amen. Lord have mercy. I, I, just, I just think about how Jesus did it. Came down and, and, and served humanity with all of our mess. Humanity was worshiping these carnal emperors and kings and the divine king of kings was here. And instead of bowing down to him, humanity came and questioned him. What about this? Tried to trip him up, tried to stumble him, tried to trap him, eventually crucified him before torturing him to death. And he did that to save us from ourselves. Man, I think about that kind of mercy. It is amazing. It's amazing grace. And then I ask myself, well, 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 if that's the case, if that's the kind of love that 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 Jesus shows, if if that's the kind of love, this is the kind of love that Joseph shows. Well, that that sister that that looked at me the wrong way, I, I can certainly show her some mercy. That person that was too short with me, I can certainly show them some mercy. That person that bruised my ego, they, they, you know, you know, they told me that I wasn't in their top five preachers. I can show that person some mercy. You know why? Because I don't want to see them with my carnal eyes. I want to see them how God sees them. And God thought that they were to die for. In my conclusion, I just want to say that I ain't going to preach long today. I just want to say that throughout the Bible, where others saw limitations, when others saw something that they despise, when others look down on you, God sees potential. God doesn't care about age. So he blessed Abraham and Sarah in Genesis 2 and Genesis 21. God doesn't care about fluency. He doesn't care if you are a great public speaker or not. He picked an ineloquent Moses to lead his people out of Egypt. God doesn't care about how much experience you have. He selected a shepherd boy to become a king in the person of David. God doesn't care about your gender. He chose Esther to be queen and save her people. God doesn't care about how prestigious your occupation is or is not. He used fishermen to bring the gospel to the world. People saw Joseph in all sorts of ways. But he didn't allow it to stop him from being close to God. He didn't allow it to stop him from going to where God wanted him to go. He didn't allow for self-defeatism to stop him from, from, from elevating as God wanted him to. He didn't allow for his own self-negation to, to stop God from exalting him. Joseph could have said, oh, I'm just a shepherd boy, but he didn't. He could have said, oh, I'm just a slave, but he didn't. He could have said, oh, I'm just a prisoner, but he didn't. Every step of the way, he remembered who he really was in the eyes of God. 
And because of his faith, God elevated him. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Who, who are you? You are precious in the eyes of God. You are loved by God. You are cherished by God. I want you to know today that you are a child of God, a daughter of God, a son of God. You are to die for in God's eyes. That's why God so loved you that he sent his son to die for you. So don't allow how the world sees you to get in the way of how God sees you. Because how God sees you is how God will use you. And truth be told, no other person's opinion of you matters beyond what God sees in you. Brothers and sisters, this is faith. This is faith that God sees something in you greater than what you see in yourself. So do not allow for your lack of faith and what God can do through you and with you to hinder what God has in store for you as a precious daughter or son of God.